Hello, and welcome to our Parcel tutorial series. Um, in this series, we're going to introduce you to Parcel, walk you through the Quick Start Guide, and help you get started building on the Oasis network. Um, so today, we're going to really just cover some high-level concepts about Parcel, talk to you about you know, the key things you need to know before you dive into documentation. Um, and then in future videos, we'll dive into some actual tutorials about how to start building things. Um, if you'd like to follow along or just kind of want to jump ahead, you can visit docs.oasislabs.com. Uh, you can check out the link in the description as well. Um, I am not technical at all. So today we are joined by Nikhil. He's going to help me and hopefully you guys understand exactly how Parcel works. He's the lead engineer here at Oasis Labs um, and really, you know, does quite a bit of work on Parcel and works with quite a few of our customers, uh, you know, to help them along. So he'll be a great resource as we dive into some of these concepts. Um, so, hey, Nikhil, welcome. Hi, everyone. Great to meet you. I am excited to show you our parcel tools that we've built today and in the next few videos. And I'm really excited to have all of you use it. Great. Yeah, me too. It's going to be fun. Um, cool. So as a quick reminder, uh, if you're really new to parcel, parcel is a powerful suite of APIs. It's really designed to help apps um, and users better protect their data and also really set some nice guardrails around how data can be used. You know, we, I think in the modern world, we see lots of instances where users are just kind of handing over their data and not really setting any restriction on how it's used, or, you know, that data is potentially leaked uh, in a way that it, you know, exposed it to other individuals. So with Parcel, we really wanted to make a suite of tools that prevented that, and then also allowed some new paradigms like owning your data, trading your data, monetizing your data in interesting ways. And so we'll talk a lot about that in later videos, um, but today, just to get started with Parcel, um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to show you an overview of the architecture of Parcel and kind of what are all the key components. I think like what really made Parcel click for me um, was understanding kind of its core basic functions. Um, so at its, at its most primitive, most basic level, Parcel allows you to upload data sets, um, set permissions that control how that data is used, and then actually run compute uh, on data, on those data sets in a privacy preserving environment. Um, so those are really like the three key functions of Parcel. It can do quite a bit more. It's actually very flexible and can really be applied to a lot of use cases. Um, but Nikhil, why don't you maybe walk us through how all this actually fits together? Like what are those key primitives that make up Parcel and allow you to do all these interesting things? Yeah, of course. So let's first start with discussing some of the high level parcel concepts that make up the ecosystem. So I think the first and possibly the most fundamental concept is that of an identity, um, which really represents any entity that participates um, in the parcel ecosystem. So identities can represent many things. They can represent an application um, that you build on parcel, can represent the developer behind that application, and it can represent all of the users of that application as well. So your identity and the authentication that goes hand in hand with it determines which actions that you are and aren't allowed to take. And all of this permission management is handled by the parcel runtime um, on the Oasis network. So you get some nice um, high integrity guarantees um, through that. And we'll talk through some of that more later in this video. Yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, the Oasis network is key to all of this. Um, it, it's really kind of an underpinning fundamental element, uh, you know, a parcel. But of course, our goal here is to provide, provide really easy APIs um, that have some key primitives like identities um, kind of on top of that. So that's really helpful. So identities are users, um, they're developers, they're applications, they're really kind of all the players in this ecosystem. Um, so what, what, you know, kind of what's next? What can identities own? Like where does kind of the data come into play here? Yeah, so the atomic unit of data on Parcel is called documents. Um, so documents have no prescribed format. They're really anything that you can encode as bytes, you can mm -hmm. upload as a document. Um, cool. And they're stored in blob form um, and uploaded via our document management APIs. Um, so as you can see in the diagram, there is that parcel gateway that helps connect to data set storage where these encrypted documents are then stored and their encryption keys are 
managed by the parcel runtime. So tying into identities, all documents that are uploaded have identities which own them. Um, and these identities are then responsible for controlling access to the documents by granting consents for various actions um, and also owning identities can also see exactly which actions were actually taken um, via our audit log APIs. Mm -hmm. um, so you can always see how exactly your data was used and ensure that it's not being used in ways you don't want. Yeah, and, and what's neat about that is like a lot of the operations um, run by Parcel, those audit logs are also backed by the Oasis network. So what you have is kind of high integrity guarantees that um, you know what I'm seeing or how I'm seeing my data being used, that those are actually correct and accurate. Um, and that's kind of part of the general ethos of, of Parcel and um, is to provide that kind of transparency to identities that want to monitor and control how their data is being used. Um, Got it. So, okay. So we have identities, we have documents, you know, we've kind of been alluding to the fact that, Hey, you can actually control how these documents um, are accessed. So, so, um, you know, how does that work? How do you actually go about sharing documents with identities that you want to give, give them access to? Yeah. So parcel, as Andrew mentioned, is very flexible. It allows for peer to peer document sharing. Um, and at the same time, a more common use case is between um, developers that want to use some data or organizations that want to use some data and end users. Mm -hmm. And so data sharing in this case is better organized in the form of apps, which is another parcel primitive. So apps can be created and managed via our application management APIs directly through um, our SDK or any other um, standard tools. But we also provide a nice user interface for doing this, um, which is our developer portal. Um, yeah. To check that out, you can visit portal.oasislabs.com to get started. Um, so how that works, you can go to our portal, register an application, and permissions that that application will need to request when receiving documents. Um, and then we have a similar user interface for end users of your application. Um, here, they can view documents that they own. Um, they can see audit logs of their documents um, and which applications have access to documents in certain ways. Um, this user end user interface can be viewed at steward.oasislabs.com and is our steward app. Um, yeah, so via steward, document owners can um, accept grants. Um, so, and give these grants to um, application developers to mm -hmm. view their documents. Um, and all of this is handled by our permission management APIs. Yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, what Nikhil's starting to outline here is this relationship between an end user of your application um, and the developer and how they're actually being, being able to have much stricter controls over, okay, I'm a user, I'm gonna be able to control how my data is being used. So let's say the developer uploads a document, um, you know, that represents my financial records. Uh, via Steward, I actually get to control how that how that data is used and all of that control, all of that auditing is backed by the Oasis network. So you get this really powerful paradigm where you're not just like checking some box on, you know, consent box for, for you know, data usage uh, on some someone else's website. You're actually getting this kind of centralized third-party application that's controlling access to data, that's like giving you controls over how you how your data is used, and really helping mediate this relationship between an end user and an application developer. And that's I think what's really cool about Parcel and kind of what makes it so powerful. Um, so of course, like you know, I need to grant permission for for data to be used. What you know, what kind of actions? Like if I was a user and I would say Nikhil is the developer. Nikhil, what kind of actions could I, I grant um, you to do with my data? What could you do with it? Yeah, great question, Andrew. So that is actually exactly what our final parcel primitive we'll be talking about today is for. Um, and that's what we call compute jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so you can create and view compute jobs via our job dispatcher APIs. So what happens is that owners of data um, can do one of two things. So they can provide full access to their documents uh, to recipients, which will, allow, which will allow them to download 
those documents in entirety. Um, and then they can see an audit log that their data set was downloaded. Um, but now that the recipient has this download in hand, they can now proceed to do whatever they want with that data and the audit trail really stops there. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So a, a better solution here is to allow very specific access via compute jobs. Um, so how a compute job really works is um, developers will write specific executables and package them as Docker images. Um, these Docker images will be public or um, in some other way auditable, auditable by mm -hmm. users. And so once a user trusts um, a Docker image to access their data, um, they can create a grant to that um, Docker image to access their documents. Um, then these jobs run within GCP confidential VMs on our parcel workers. Um, so to learn more about how confidential VMs work, um, check out the link in the description. But the TLDR is that they provide some isolation for compute so that um, no entities, including the VM host machines or the um, entities that you've granted access to your documents to um, can access these parcel documents in their decrypted state. It's only the um, job itself, which can access the document within these very memory isolated constraints. Yeah, it, it's a really neat concept. Like I like to think about it kind of as a black box, like data goes in, compute job goes in, and what comes out is an encrypted result. And what's cool about that encrypted result is the you know the original owner of the the data set that went in, um, they're the one that owns that. So they get to set permissions. They get to control how that data is consumed. You know, once it comes out of that that black box, um, so you really get end-to-end -end control. I think what's also cool about this, which Nikhil indicated before, is like, um, you know, most you know traditional systems, how you know permissions work or how these kind of data policies work is. You're handing over all of your data and then you're just saying hey i'm going to check a box that says i trust that you won't do anything bad with it and that's great but um you know even if someone's not malicious maybe they don't handle the data very well um, and the data leaks now your data is out there and it can be copied and used kind of and in, in many different ways so just handing over access or handing over raw data to another party always has its risks and especially because data is so easily transferable and so easily copied um with this setup you're giving specific access to a specific job to run on a specific set of data in such a way that really no one is, you know, that data is not leaked, it's not available in its raw form outside of this really isolated environment. So that mitigates a lot of the risk that comes with using traditional applications. You have much greater control, you have much stronger guarantees. And, and at the end of the day, you just kind of have a lot more peace of mind that your data is not floating around out there in the ethos or being misused in a way, um, you know, that you don't want it to. And you know, maybe that's not super important for everyone, but when it comes to things like health records, financial information, um, you know, these things are really critical. And as technology becomes more and more involved in our everyday lives, tools like Parcel that are backed by the Oasis network, it's, it's incredibly valuable. Um, you know, they're, they're gonna become much more valuable and much more important. Um, so maybe to kind of drive this home, Nikhil, let's talk about an example of you know, how Parcel might be able to be used or what's kind of a use case that we could dive into. Uh, you know, one that comes off to mind, I just bought a car the other day. I went through the whole process of getting a loan for the car. Um, you know, and it, it was kind of a, um, not concerning process, but it's kind of an intense process. You're giving them all this personal information, my social security number, my income, bank statements, all this stuff. And they're inputting it into the, some old Dell PC that I'm really hoping is, is you know, up to date and doesn't have any, you know, any bugs on it. So, you know, how could Parcel be used to develop an application that maybe does that in a more secure, more privacy friendly way? Yeah, great question, Andrew. Yeah, we've definitely talked through quite a few concepts today, um, very abstractly. So let's, let's <laughs> talk about this example and uh, really make concrete what we've discussed. Um, so credit scoring, how do you do that on Parcel? Um, so let's say I am a credit scoring agency that wants to use Parcel to register my credit scoring application. Um, mm -hmm. So the first step I do is I will go to the developer portal and register that. Um, that'll prompt me to also create some permissions um, that will 
um, be requested from anybody that uploads a credit scoring report to my application. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I'll also develop a credit scoring script um, that will be bundled as a Docker image, as mentioned before. Um, and this can then be create, used to um, create jobs with that Docker image. Um, so this script that I'll write, it will take anything that I want to generate a credit score as input. Um, so as you mentioned, Andrew, it might take in social security numbers, um, income statements, um, any other um, credit report data um, that's needed. I'll upload it as parcel documents and not accessible by anybody other than the uploaders themselves. Um, then once I have my users accept permissions, I can trigger these compute jobs, um, which will run within GCP confidential VMs, um, take these documents that I've been granted permission to use via the job as input, um, and spit out another credit score document as output that's with the owner set directly to be um, the end user that provided the inputs. Mm -hmm. um, so talking through all of this, um, at no point was I ever, I as the credit scoring agency, ever given access to download the end user's credit score, their social security number, um, their income, or any other sensitive data. Um, and I was still able to provide value to them by giving them the credit score that they wanted. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great example because um, here we're dealing with sensitive data, like we talked about. Um, we're potentially even dealing with a sensitive scoring function, right? Maybe someone has a proprietary credit scoring function that they want to keep confidential as well. Um, you know, all these things are really sensitive data. And the cool part about it is you can do it on blockchain, right? On a traditional uh, layer one network that's entirely public, you would never want to put your social security number on there. You'd never want to plug that into a DAP. So having parcel, having confidentiality, and having these various paradigms is really critical to enabling these types of use cases on blockchain, um, and also providing these stronger privacy guarantees to users. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, these business to consumer use cases like credit scoring, where you have a user making an application that, uh, you know, is designed for an end user. But again, parcel is super flexible. So if you're working on an enterprise use case where you want to, say, enable data sharing between two businesses, or you want to do some kind of insurance modeling, or you know, we're for example doing um, a threat analysis on exchange data with the CryptoSafe Alliance, and Binance. Um, you know, all these kinds of things are examples of how Parcel can be used for a broad set of applications. Um, so we encourage you all to dive in, get started. On our next video, we're going to talk about uploading documents. Um, kind of drive dive into the first real tutorial on the document on the documentation. So would love to see you guys all there and watching that video. Um, of course, if you have questions, uh, you can go to docs.oasislabs.com to learn more, or we're also on our community Slack channel. So check out the link below um, to join the Slack channel there. And of course, we'd love to talk to you. Um, we chat with pretty much any all of our, our customers using Parcel, uh, get, get to meet with us, and we like to dive in and kind of hear about their use case. So if you're not really sure about where to get started um, and you'd like to chat with us and brainstorm how Parcel could work for your solution, Join our Slack channel, ping me and Nikhil, and we would love to hop on a call. Um, so anyway, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks, guys. This was a, this was a really fun chat. Thanks, Nikhil, for walking us through everything. Uh, I know I learned a lot. Um, it was really helpful. So we'll see you guys all in the next video. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. And excited to get our hands dirty in the upcoming videos. Yeah, see you guys. Bye.